Thank you very much for the very nice introduction. My name is Ralph Jürgens. I'm uh, very happy to be here and to share some views of a uh, scrubber manufacturer. Our title is More Than Alter Alternative Bri Bridge Technologies, and I think this is quite important to point out that scrubbing um, in the shipping industry today, we are using, let's say, the generation one or generation two, and there is a lot more to be accomplished with the uh, scrubber technology. Um, just a, one slide, I'm not doing a lot of a company presentation here. We are a German-based manufacturer of scrubbers, SCRs, and one of our sister companies is also making fuel additives. Um, which could be interesting for um, the new generation of fuels we're going to see in the shipping industry um, as of next year. Um, we are a joint venture with a uh, Chinese manufacturer, and um, we have our production sites um, also in China. Engineering, uh, designing, and all the technical details are made in Germany. Um, we are providing emission reduction concepts and with more than 800 power plants equipped with SNCR and SCR systems and with more than 700 power plants with scrubber technologies, we are probably one of the technology leaders in exhaust gas cleaning. We've also um, installed SCR systems for, for vessels and even for two-stroke engines um, fueled with heavy fuel oil. Um, <clears throat> So scrubbers, SCRs, and fuel additives um, in combination um, are providing exhaust gas after treatment. So what a scrubber can do is everything that's leaving the engine uh, in, forms of, in the form of gas or in form of uh, particulate matter. Um, I'm not here to explain what is a hybrid scrubber, what is a open loop scrubber, what is, what is a <clears throat> closed loop scrubber. I'm assuming that everybody in this room is aware of that. Um, I would rather put an emphasis on the uh, technology and the potential of scrubbers. So, um, but in specifically, I'm going to address particulate matter, heavy metals, and PIH. Um, and um, I'd like also to, to show that scrubbers are ready to meet future regulations. And uh, um, Charis has already addressed that, the discussion on open loop scrubber bands. Um, this is a discourse that needs to be um, commented and it needs to be uh, put in the right perspective, I think. Okay, you, you are all familiar with that uh, technology, so I can uh, save the time and skip that um, very quickly. Um, let me come to the point more than a bridge technology. Our scrubbers are the first function of a scrubber is the reduction of SOX. That's obviously. However, um, scrubbers today, generation one and generation two, can accomplish a lot more. The reduction of particulate matter, reduction of heavy metals, um, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, um, as well as um, sulfates. This is something that we, can, uh, that, we, that we can do. Specifically, the particulate matter discussion will, uh, will hit the shipping industry. I'm very sure that um, the uh, regulation on PM will be one of the next regulations we're going to see in the uh, shipping industry. Um, particulate matter that can be filtered out in a, in a scrubber consists of a, a lot of uh, components. Basically, it's condensed hydrocarbons, it's sulfides, it's soot, soot with uh, um, absorbed hydrocarbons, and on and on. And one of the interesting aspects you see on the, uh, on the graph here is that Comparing low sulfur fuel with uh, high, sulfur, high, high sulfur fuel um, means, in terms of particulate matter, that only this small part of the emission can be reduced by uh, distillate fuels. All the other components, like or organic carbon, elemental carbon ashes, are pretty much the same if you run the engine on gas oil or on heavy fuel oil. So, um, in terms of particulate matter, um, an MGO uh, fueled engine has to do something as soon as the uh, PM regulation will be in place. Um, the scrubber generation one and two I'm referring to can probably um, filter out 60 to 80 percent of the uh, particulate matter um, and uh, prevent the air from being com contaminated with those particles. 
new scrubber systems, um, like, like ours for instance, uh, being optimized for the filtration of particulate matter can achieve 80 to 95 percent of particulate matter filtration. Um, this is quite a quite good result um, if you consider that um, the back pressure of that system is not increasing significantly. Um, achieving 95 percent filtration efficiency um, costs just one, two millibars back pressure, and that wouldn't really harm the, the engine at all. Now, um, heavy metals. Um, this is something that is also very interesting to, um, to address. Heavy fuel oils, as you all know, contain a huge amount of heavy metals from, the, uh, from different uh, um, elements. Distillate oils, gas oil, um, does not contain any kind of uh, um, heavy metals. The new generation of fuels we're going to see, those ultra-low sulfur, sulfur fuel oils, are being uh, supplied by the major oil suppliers as of next year, will also contain heavy metals. So if you look at the heavy metal um, fraction in those uh, new ultra-low sulfur fuel oils, it's more on the heavy fuel oil side uh, than on the gas oil side. So this problem will not go away with just using ultra-low sulfur fuel oil. Um, and Many of those heavy metals are tied to particulate matter fractions, and with, with a very good and efficient particulate matter fract, um, reduction, we can also achieve a significant reduction of firm um, heavy metals. Um, so we're taking that heavy metal fraction out of the exhaust gas, put it into the water, and then in, enough, in a water treatment system on board of the vessels, these things like heavy metals and other um, carbon um, connect, uh, related uh, partic particles can be then filtered out. So we can definitely, with the scrubber technology and the afterward um, installed wash water treatment systems, we can definitely do something very good for the environment, both air and water. Uh, polyaromatic hydrocarbons. Um, this is a long word for, a, for unburned hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons, unburned hydrocarbons, or polyaromatic hydrocarbons, are um, part of the combustion process. An incomplete combustion process inside of the engine will release some of the PAH, and those PAH are not regulated yet. I would expect that this is also something um, that's going to be regulated uh, sooner or later. Um, and these um, PAH, um, they are also sticking to particulate matter, and with a good filtration efficiency on particulate matter, a big portion of those PAH can be also reduced from the exhaust gas and can be then later treated in a um, wash water treatment system on board of the vessel. Um, we do have these uh, limitations, um, and um, this is already regulated by the IMO. I wouldn't expect that those uh, values are going further down, um, and these are um, absolutely achievable. Just uh, two slides on the uh, scrubber market. Um, this is a uh, statistic provided by DNVGL's AFI, Alternative Fuel um, Initiative, and um, what you can see is the uh, the growth of uh, scrubbers in the market is just um, is an exponential growth, and um, I'm expecting that by the year 2025 we will probably see around 15, maybe 18,000 scrubbers being on board of vessels. Um, what you can also see is that basically the major vessel types, like bulk carriers, like container vessels, um, can be equipped with scrubbers. Um, from a technical point of view, um, there's no vessel type that cannot be equipped with a, uh, um, with a scrubber. However, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's more challenging. Uh, we are currently working on the first closed loop system to be installed on an existing cruise vessel. Now, that is a challenge, I can tell you. Um, however, it can be done. So let's 
put uh, the emphasis on the open loop band discussions we are having. Um, Cherish has already addressed uh, two interesting studies, one of the Carnival Group and the other from Japan. And let me just briefly reflect where we are. In 1997, the Marple Annex 6 has been agreed on. In 2008, we uh, um, established the MEPC 184 uh, with the goal 2020 or 2025 uh, as a date for the implementation of low, low sulfur use. In 2017, the MEPC 184 has been um, upgraded to MEPC 259. And in 2019, just for the, just a few months ahead of the um, implementation of the uh, regulation, we're starting to discuss um, is it right to discharge the wash water of open loop scrubbers um, or not. And this is, I think, for the first, first time in history, we extenuate a legislation which is not even in place or in force. Um, I can't remember of anything similar happening on exhaust gas or flue gas cleaning industry on land. So what we're seeing today is a, or what are the effects of this discourse on open loop? Uh, we're confusing the shipping industry. Um, we're jeopardizing the investments of the scrubber industry and of ship owners. I just made a, uh, last night with a glass of wine in my hand, I just made a rough calculation that approximately for the time being, um, the value of 10 billion euros has been invested from the shipping industry into scrubber technology. And now with that discussion, a big part of that is in question. We are also weakening, with that kind of discussion, we are also weakening the position of IMO as a regulator. And in the public opinion, we're doing harm to the image of the shipping industry, which is just not fair. So what we should do, I think, is we should comply with the sulfur cap and stick to MEPC 259. Um, we should gain experience during 20 and 21 um, and see what are the results with scrubbers. And we should start a research program accepted by all stakeholders on the impact of open loop scrubbers on the maritime environment. And then we should let the scrubber industry and others develop enhanced or new technologies if necessary. We can do a lot more with scrubbers than we can do today. So my summary, and I've got 10 seconds left, is uh, the technology Scrubber technology today meets the uh, um, regulations. Um, the discussions we are having now is paralyzing the industry, the overall industry, and if we do it jointly in the correct way and manner, the environment will win. Thank you.